come on, put your hands together. And let's give God some praise on this morning. How many of you know that God is able to do what he said he would do? And he's going to fulfill every promise that he made to you. I want to encourage you on this morning to don't give up on God because he truly won't give up on you. He is able. Somebody need to know that right now. Right where you are, you need to know that God is still able. He is still God and sits on the throne and he is still in control. I want to encourage you on this morning to let you know that we have so much for which to thank God for. Let's not take for granted what God has done and what God is able to do for us in spite of the challenges that we are facing during this time. So if you will, join in with me and say, God is able to do just what he said he would do. My brothers and sisters, this indeed is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So we come to worship him this morning because he is good. He is worthy and he surely is able. We are here on this first Sunday in August, and we are so grateful that the Lord has ordered our steps to this sacred place. We ask that you go ahead and prepare yourselves for worship, gather your family members, and bring them in so we can worship our true and living Savior. We welcome you this morning to our online campus of Going to Chapel United Methodist Church in Houston, Texas. So I invite you now to go with me in prayer to God. Diligent Lord, watch over us at these times. Be with us all these days. We confess that we have allowed a host of worries and frustrations to crowd out your word for us. As you give us peace and your transforming love, also forgive all those times when we have been less than faithful disciples. Gently visit us again with your healing powers, restore our hope and encourage and joy for all the times of hell. We ask this in the name of the master healer, Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you and thank you for tuning in. If you are watching for the first time, please let us know by leaving a comment below so that we can connect with you. Or you may connect with us on Facebook at Boynton Chapel, UMC-Houston, and our YouTube channel, which is Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church, Houston. We appreciate you so much, and we hope that you are getting our text alerts. You can text Boynton to 31996, Again, text Boynton to 31996. We also want to let you know that you can join us for our Worship Wednesdays at 6 o'clock p.m. Worship Wednesday is our time in which members of our congregation share with us how God is moving in their lives during this season. And we invite you to tune in every Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. My brothers and sisters, Luke 6 and 38 tells us, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. And that's the kind of God that we serve. So we invite you to join with us this morning in our offering to the Lord. You can do so by Type texting Zale at BoyntonChapelUMC.org or through Givelify at Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church. Or if you can mail your ties to Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church, 2812 Milby Street, Houston, Texas, 77004. And we also want to encourage you, if you are in need of prayer, please don't hesitate to call the church at 713 7486066 and one of our staff members will pray with you and for you. It is during this time that we believe God, we trust God, we praise God, and we worship God. For he truly is a mighty God. 
Come on and let's worship our God together. We invite you to celebrate the Lord's Day with us. Amen.
Larry Guillory and I serve here at Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church where Reverend Linda Davis is our senior pastor. I thank God for this opportunity to serve him this morning and to bring you our message for today. If you would, please bow with me for a word of prayer. Eternal God and Father in heaven, again, we just thank you. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for calling us, predestining us, God, knowing that even during these times of trials and tribulations, God, you still have things in control. God, we thank you for the great love that you've shown us through the, our faith in your son, Jesus Christ. God, and we just pray now and ask him in his name, God, that you would search our hearts, if there be anything about us that you're not pleased with. We ask that you remove it, cast it away, God, that it will never return again. And Father, I ask that you would just search my heart, oh God. Cleanse it from anything that is not of you, God. Allow your people, God, to hear and see more and more of you and less of me. Have your way with me as our prayer. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles with, us, with you this morning, I ask that you please turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 7 through 10. 2 Corinthians 12. Verses 7 through 10. So to keep me from being becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me. To keep me from becoming conceited, three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it would, should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladness of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me for the sake of Christ. Then I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, I am strong. I want to speak with you this morning on the topic of hope during our time of need. Hope during our time of need. We're living in a time when it seems as if things are changing and moving so fastly that it's hard for many of us to keep up with. It's hard for us to find great leaders that we can follow and trust. Even now, we're being faced with a pandemic where many are sick. Many of you now know someone that's either sick or have even succumbed to this great virus. People are dying all around the world and our economies are failing, businesses are closing, jobs are being lost, and our government at times appears to be making things worse instead of better. Know that at there are times when there's no clear directions on what it is we are to do. There appear to be constant confusion on almost anything and everything. We're told to go and get tests. Then we're told we don't told we don't need tests. We're told that businesses should stay open. Then they say close the businesses. We're told to wear masks. Then we're told masks are not needed. We're told that it's okay for us to protest. Then we're told stop protesting. We're told that it's okay to have large gatherings. But then they say large gatherings are not good for us. It appears as though there's just division everywhere. There's divisions in our nations, our countries, our states, our cities, even in our household. We find that there's turmoil everywhere. I heard lately just on the news recently where they said that domestic violence is even up higher now than it's ever been. Could this be because people are being asked to stay at home? You would think that if we're married or we're in the same household, we should be able to get along with one another, but that's not so. I've heard that people not only are, are going through many divorces now, but they're struggling with the loss of jobs or illness in their families. But I want you to understand this. There is one thing that we all should be seeking. That is a little hope. We all are looking for hope during our time of distress, 
a little hope during our time of need. We need hope when we feel ourselves getting weak where we can't take this pressure anymore. Hope is that thing that we hope for, that we look forward to to make things better. Hope is what we look for when we're sick to, to help us heal. Hope is that thing that is within us that tells us that it's going to be okay. Just hold on a little longer. Well, I'm here this morning to tell you that the Bible has a lot to say about hope. Today, I want to take just a brief moment or two to encourage you in your hope. Because as believers in Christ, we should all know that there is good news ahead. We should all understand that as long as there is a Christ, and we know there is a Christ because he sits at the right hand of the Father. And as long as he's there, we know that he is doing what he said he's going to do. My Bible tells me that he's there making intercessory prayer for me. That means whenever I'm in need of something, whenever I need a little hope, whenever things are not going quite like I think they should, I can call upon him and he will tell the Father, this is what my son needs. The Bible also assures me that as long as Christ is there, it assures me that what he says is true, that he is coming back, which assures me that when he comes back, I know things are going to be made perfected. Those things which are not being handled and dealt with correctly now. But for right now, for us now, we, we, we all want something to grab a hold of and to, to just let us know that we're on the right trail. We're, we're following the right marks. And, and sometimes that gets a little hard. But in helping us today, the first thing we need to understand is what is hope? Hope. I know it's something we like to grasp, but as I look through the dictionary to try and come up with a definition that I thought hope would help me, it would help me in understanding what it was. It said to me that, that hope is something, is, is cherishing something with great anticipation. Looking forward towards something that we have a great desire for, or great expectations. Looking to obtain something that, that has not been achieved achievable thus far, but we know it is possible for us to attain hope, hope to expect with confidence. See, that all believers should be expecting far greater things than what we have now. All believers should be expecting things better with great confidence. All of us should know that this, in this world, the things that we're dealing with is not going to be a permanent situation. We should understand that, that hope is something that, that we must go through if we're going to be a child of God. We, we should understand that hope is what God puts before us to keep us in line and, and keep us focused upon the prize that is in store for us. You see, we have to hope for eternal life. Eternal life, which means that we can and will live forever. Eternal life that says that if, if we just trust in and believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of the living God, then we will and shall have eternal life. That's what John 3.16 is all about. When it tells us that's what, for God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him shall have eternal life. See, so this is what the hope that we have, that no matter what we're going through now, because we believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, we believe this, and because we believe this, we know that we have eternal life. So now in knowing this, that we have eternal life, that should give us a little bit more energy, energy during our time of weakness. It should give us a little more vigor, a little more zeal, that when we're feeling weak, we should be able to jump up and say, weakness may endure for right now. Oh, but we know what happens in the morning. There will be a little joy, you know. We might suffer and we might ache and we might pain, but we know that this is not all there is to it. We know that we serve a God who is able to meet every need that we have. But first, how do we have hope when, when it seems that still so much is out of control? How do we have hope when we turn on the television set and we listen to the news and we find all of these things going on all around us? And I don't know about you, but as I hear these things, it seems as if this sickness, this disease is getting closer and closer to home. 
I was listening just this Friday morning when it said uh, around the world there's over 15 million reported cases of coronavirus. And out of that 15 million, it says 633,000 people have died. And then it says here in America, United States of America, the place that most people look up to, it says we have over 4 million, 4 million reported cases, 144,000 deaths, with another 15 to 30,000 deaths projected over the next two or three weeks. Now, I don't know about you, but when they get to throwing those millions, those, those numbers out, I begin to think that, that if this is really true, that's something like one in every five people are going to either have coronavirus or are going to die from that same sickness or disease. I don't know about you, but it sounds like it's getting a little close to home. It sounds to me like I need something else to hold on to. I don't know about you, but when it began to talk like that, I began to wonder how is it that I can have hope when it looks like everything in the world is all closing down. Not just closing down, but it's closing down all around me. You can't even walk into a grocery store anymore and get the things that you could normally purchase. Why? Because people are out of work. They can't get the things that they was always used to getting. And we need to think about that because as children of God, we understand that this is not our home, but we have to live here. And if we have to live here, then it's up to us to determine how it is we're expected to live. So how do we have hope? Well, it starts first by listening and acting upon the word of God. Listening and acting on the Word of God. So let us look at, first of all, let's look at what God tells us about how it is, how we can get this problem fixed here in America. Not only in America, but around the world. God tells us how we can do this. In 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, he tells us that if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will hear their land, heal their land. So listen to what that says. God is telling us, if my people, he's speaking about you and me, his people, those who have been called by him, he's telling us four things that he wants us to do, and he would heal our land. First, he tells us that if we would just humble ourselves, Y'all know what humbling yourselves means. That means that, that you, don't, you're not, you don't always have to be right. Or you don't always have to be the one on top. It's not all about you. It's allowing others to go first. It's admitting that you can't do it all by yourself. Humbling yourself means that, that you need something far greater than what you have to help you to get you out of this situation that you're in. It means admitting that you are a sinful person. And that the only way that you can escape this sin is to turn to God. And so that's what he tells us in number two. He says the second thing we should do is pray to God. He says humble yourself, but then pray to God. Ask God for forgiveness. Acknowledge that you are a sinner in need of forgiveness. So ask God for forgiveness. And then he said when you ask God for forgiveness, the third thing he wants us to do is to seek him out. He doesn't mean just holler at him whenever you need something. Hey, God, I need this right now. I need this today. He says, seek him out. That means you are to continue, continually, diligently seek him out. You seek him out through studying his word, listening to his word, meditating upon his word, allowing God to speak back to you, allowing his word to take hold of you, allowing the Christ that is in you to consume you so that you can do his will. God tells us in his word that, that his word will be a lamp to our feet. So if we seek him out and we seek his word out, then we will allow his word to guide and direct us. And then he says when we allow this, this word to, to just permeate through our bodies, if we allow his word to take control of us, he tells us that we should turn from our wicked ways. Now, I don't know, you might not have wicked ways, but let me say this. Another way of saying it is turn from your sinful behaviors. 
Turn away from the things that you know is not in agreement with God. Turn away from those things which God has told you not to get involved with and start doing the will of God. He tells us that, that we are to turn away. And what he's asking us to do is he's asking us for true repentance. In other words, he's saying turn away from what you were doing and turn toward God and allow him to do it. Turn away from your own ways and start following God's way. The psalmist, the psalmist tells us that, and now, O oh Lord, for what do I do? I wait. I wait for my hope is in you. See, when we do those four things, the next step for us is to just wait on God. Allow God to do his thing. God is saying, just, just wait. Wait. Why? Because my hope is in you, God. That's acknowledging. That's humbling that you can't do it yourself. You need God. So, God, I'm going to wait. Then Psalm 71 and 5 says, For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust. O Lord, I trust you from my youth. That means, listen, ever since you were, we were told about this living God who has a son that came down to earth to save us, we have put our trust, our hope in him. And he says we are to continue to do that. Our hope is grounded. It should be grounded in him. And if we acknowledge to God that we have not always done the things that we should have done and we've even done some things that we should not have done and decide to allow God to let his will be done in our life instead of us doing it our way God says I'll hear from heaven and I'll hear your land see the question is or the problem is is that we're not always willing to trust God God tells us that we're to trust him and that means trusting with everything, not just the little part, parts of our life, or not just the problem, 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 excuse me, the problems in our life. God says, trust Him with our whole life, our entire life, with everything that's going on in, around, and about us. God is telling us that we are to trust Him. In Proverbs three, the, the Proverbs tells us that my son, do not forget about my teachings, but keep my commands in your heart. For they will prolong your life for many years. It tells us that, that, that it will bring us peace and prosperity. He said, let love and faithfulness never leave you. It says, bind them around your neck. Write them on a tablet in your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in sight of God and in sight of man. See, if we all know we need, we serve a God who is able, but if we want this God who is able to meet our needs, to strengthen us during our time of weakness, to give us hope that lets us know that he is still with us, then what it tells us what we need to do, we need to find, have a good name with God. You know, a good name is one that, 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 that is developed over a period of time. Good name is one that is, that is strengthened over a over relationship that has been going on for some period of time. And God is saying that when we do these things, he says when we do this, then we will have a good, man, good name in his sight. And not only in God's sight, but we will have a good name around mankind also. I don't know about you, but I'd like for everyone to say that Larry is a pretty good old fellow. But more than anything, I like I love it. I just love it if God would say, he was a man who, who sought after me whenever he could. He tried his best to serve and to seek after me. That's what I'd love to hear. Or better yet, I'd like to hear when he say, come on up, my servant, well done. That's what I'd like to hear. So what it says is that when we, when we do these things, when we write uh, his words on our neck, around our neck and our tablets of our heart, it tells us that these things are good with God. And then in verse 5, it tells us that we are to trust in the Lord with all our heart and to lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, we are to submit to him. And it says when we submit to him, he will make our paths straight. See, I, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I get a little off path. Sometimes I, I, I see all these things going on around us and in this world till I begin to think that I have to do something about it. But what this is telling me is that I don't have to do it. God has already got this figured out. All I have to do is trust in him with all my heart. All my heart. Submit to him. And it says he will direct my path and make them straight. In our text this morning, the Apostle Paul is, is telling us that he suffered with a thorn in his flesh. A thorn in his flesh, he said, that God placed there to keep him from being conceived. 
And, what, and if you do a little background on that, you'll find out that the Apostle Paul was being accused by some of the false prophets as not being religious enough. In other words, they were saying that, that Paul, you want to say you this is how things should be and shouldn't be, but you haven't paid your dues yet. In other words, you haven't had an experience with God like we have. And then Paul begins to tell them, I, I have these experiences, but I just don't like to boast like some of you like to boast. He said, in fact, when I, I have more to boast about than any of you have. In fact, you all think that God has been blessing you and not blessing me. I've been through many trials. I've had plenty of persecution. I've been lied upon. I've been whipped. I've been beaten. I've been shipwrecked. I've been through so much to where God has said to me, I have to hold you back. I blessed you in everything that's there. And because I blessed you so much, uh, you might begin to think that, that it's all you. Well, it's not you, Paul. God wanted Paul and he wants us to understand also that, that when, when Paul is going through these things, he wants him to recognize that it's not his doing that's delivering him from all of it. He wants us to recognize it when we're going through things, when we get a little weak and we're tired and we feel as if we, we can't take it anymore and we want to just let go, God is saying, this is the time I will step up in your life. And this is what Paul is telling the, the apostles. He said, I have many things I can boast about, but I'm not going to boast this morning. In fact, if I boast about anything, I'm going to boast about what God has done in my life. I'm going to boast about how good it is. In fact, I'm going to tell you, it was God who told me when I complained about this thorn in my flesh. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, he says, Paul, I'm going to give you everything you need to do everything that I want. That's all we need. And he's telling us today that his grace is sufficient. And it is made possible to us through his son, Jesus Christ. He says that if we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, his grace immediately falls, comes upon us. In fact, the scripture tells us that the moment we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and believe that he is the son of the living God, it says immediately God deposits within us a seal, his Holy Spirit, guaranteeing us that we belong to him. Now, you might just think this is a seal of just ownership, but this is also a seal of, of, of dwelling. It, it helps me to understand that when it was placed in me, this seal, the Holy Spirit of God, was deposited in me to stay in me, to help me whenever I'm in need. It, it, it helps me to understand that no matter what trials I might face, what persecutions might be ahead for me. He says that, that God is in me through the power of his Holy Spirit. It, it, it helps me to understand that this Holy Spirit will, will, will not only give me what I need, but it will guide me, it will strengthen me. You see, I don't know what you might be going through. I don't know what the circumstances are, are, are in your life, but God likes to take these circumstances and use them to strengthen us. That might sound a little hard to believe for some of you. How can he strengthen me? Uh, how can I be made strong when I'm already on my last leg? I'm about to lose everything I have and I don't know what to do. But God is saying that, 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 that it's during those times, and this is what Paul is telling us this morning, during those times of our weakness, when we think we can't go any further, God is saying it's during that time that Christ becomes stronger in our life. He's telling us this is when the Holy Spirit is really activated in us, when we let go and let him. He's telling us that, that, that he could boast and he could boast gladly about these weaknesses, but now he understands that, that when, he, when he is weak, Christ becomes strong. He wants us to understand that this morning, church, that we as children of God, sometimes things don't always turn out the way we want. Sometimes there are situations that we just don't know how to get out of. Sometimes we get these medical diagnoses, we get all of these things that, that is just not going the way we want. We're faced with many hardships, we're faced with persecutions. Whatever it is, Paul says that we are to boast about our weakness and allow Christ to show his strength in us. And it's Christ who gives us that hope to let us know that there is far greater things ahead. Maybe you might hear his, call, his voice calling when God says that he tells us to behold, I stand at the door knocking. If anyone will open and let me in, he says, I'll come in and sup with him. And I'll allow, I'll allow him to sup with me. What that said is God is standing here knocking this morning. He sees and he knows everything that we're dealing with. 
everything that's going on in and around us, but he's standing at the door of our hearts knocking. My question to each of you this morning is, will you let him in? Are you listening for his voice? Can you hear the tapping on your heart? Maybe it's a, it, it's a fast beat, or maybe it's a skip a beat. I don't know what it is, but God is calling you this morning. God is calling each of us. So stop, listen. Will you open up? Will you allow him to come in this Sunday? Sunday morning is the first Sunday of the month. Many of us will be partaking of what we call the Holy Communion. We'll partake of the body of Christ. We'll drink of the cup the blood of Christ. We do this because we know when we partake of the bread, we're now taking on the fullness of Christ. Not only are we taking on the fullness of Christ, but we take it and we eat it and we drink the blood in remembrance of what Christ did for us. Not only what he did for us, but it serves as a reminder to us that Christ is coming back. It reminds us that he is coming. He said to us that he would never leave us nor forsake us. So no matter what you're going through this morning, if you're willing to let Christ come in, if you're willing to partake of his, of his body and allow it to consume you, he says to you as he said to Paul, my grace is sufficient. When you're weak, I become strong. So are you willing to become strong this morning? If you're willing to become strong this morning, I invite you to just accept Christ. We offer him to you this morning. Will you open up your hearts in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Bye.